For this video, we're going to look at adding, changing, and deleting calendar events in Office 365. I've logged on to Office 365 and I've come to my calendar here. To do that, you can either click on the little calendar icon in the bottom left, or you can click on the nine little boxes and go to calendar. Your view may not look like this. This is the month view. Uh, you can see along the top, we have different views. You can have day, the work week, which is obviously Monday to Friday, uh, week, which includes the weekends uh, and the month. Wherever you go in this view, if you click today, it will automatically take you back to today's date. You can see I'm recording this on the 27th of September and it's almost 20 past one in the afternoon. It will also pull in the weather for the next few days and we'll give you some little icons on the month view of what the weather's going to be like. It may help you decide to hold your meeting or whatever outdoors. Want to create a new event we click on the little arrow next to new and calendar event we have some options pop up we can obviously save discard attach can be quite useful if you're going into a meeting you've got a report to deliver or you've got an agenda for that meeting you can attach it directly here uh, it all goes into one place then you're not kind of scrambling around on your laptop trying to find it a skype meeting you can actually do video conferencing calls and group video conferencing calls uh, using Skype for business. The charm is just a little icon that can go next to the calendar event, it may help you identify and remember things. You've also got categories. Uh, you can manage the categories here, but you could have different categories of meetings and events and that sort of thing. But for most people, all they're really going to need to use is this bit down here. So we'll start off by saying we need a title for our event. We'll say it's a staff meeting. And you can identify a room if you wanted to but for this we can just leave it blank when is it going to start well we'll say that it starts today so that's today's date at half past four and it lasts an hour and a half the other option of course you've got there is all day if it's an all-day event you can tick all day and it just removes the options of the timings there it just labels it as all day repeat Obviously, we can set this so that it's a daily meeting, a weekly meeting. You see a few default options because today's a Wednesday. It's saying every Wednesday, every work day, uh, because it's the 27th, every 27th of every month. Uh, all these options and you can have your own if you want. But this is a one-off event, so we can just leave that as never. Reminder, if you're logged into your email or you have uh, the app on your phone or your iPad, it can pop up with a reminder there 15 minutes before the meeting uh, to say that the meeting's coming up. You can obviously change that to anything up to two weeks, or you can say, I don't want any reminder at all. That's fine. Uh, there's Sometimes it feels like there's a little bit of a contradiction here, but there's not. We have a private box and we have a show as busy. So let's for instance say we've got some people who have shared our calendar uh, so they can see what we're doing. Um, you may put an event in which means you are blocked, you can't do anything else, in which case, yes, it would be busy, and that's the default. Uh, you can also put that you're free, so it may be an event that you need you need a reminder on your calendar that it's going on, but it's not actually something that's going to take up your time, and it's not something that will keep you away from other meetings, so you can say that, actually, even though there's something going on, I am free, um, and, and you've got a few other options there as well. The private is if people are sharing your calendar and for instance you're having a safeguarding meeting and, and the event name may even be safeguarding meeting and the name of the child. Obviously you don't want that going out to anyone who's shared your calendar with you. So if it is a private and confidential meeting or you feel that anywhere in here there's private and confidential information, tick private. You can also add some notes in there if you wanted to. But the other thing that people use this for a lot is the people section here. Uh, this is us, the school staff. This is the account I'm signed in as. That will be your name there. Uh, you may want to invite people to this meeting or this event. All you do is click in that box and start typing their email addresses in. They will receive an email. They can then either accept the events, they can decline the event, or they can say that they're tentative. So they may be there, they may not. And all the replies as they come in will appear 
in that list there. So you can see who's going to be there, who's not. Once you've got all this done as you want, simply click Save. And you'll notice the staff meeting's coming at half past four this afternoon. If we want to edit or delete that now, we can click on it and we get the options to edit and delete. Delete obviously will remove it. If we click on edit, you'll notice we can go in and we can change things around. So let us say the meeting is going to start half an hour earlier. What it will do, it's worth noting this, is it will change the end time as well. It knew the meeting was an hour and a half. So if you move the time so it starts earlier, it will move the end time earlier. It will keep it as an hour and a half, whether you move it backwards or forwards in time. Click save, and you'll notice it goes from 1630 to 1600, and then we can just delete. Obviously it will pop up with an option, are you sure that you want to delete? Yes. And that's how we add, change and delete calendar events in Office 365.